If you're coming from Jupiter, or if you're using Marimo maybe for the first time, then it's not unlikely that you're gonna hit this error. Over here, you can see that I've got this one line from math import star, and you can see that we get this syntax error. Importing symbols with import star is not allowed in Marimo. The fact that you cannot import with a star is a conscious choice made by Marimo, and in this video, I'm going to help explain to you why. Now, in order to explain this, I'm going to have to talk about how the notebook is stored on disk, because where Jupyter likes to have these IPy NB files that are JSON files under the hood, Marimo takes a different approach. Marimo stores everything inside of a normal Python file, and this has lots and lots of benefits. We can use modern features like UV, but also Python files are just way more friendly when you're using Git. Because it's a Python file, it also means that every single Marimo notebook can also be run from the command line like any other normal Python script. So that can make you wonder, well, how do you actually represent a notebook inside of a Python file? And what we're gonna do is we are going to take this exact notebook and we're going to just have a peek of how this is structured internally. And it can help to emphasize what we've got. We've got this one cell above over here, the one with the error. Then I've got this other cell down below over here. This one doesn't use a star to import something from the math module. This one just imports it directly. So we have this variable available, you could say. And then there's a cell down below over here where we actually use that variable. So with that bit of context, let's now look at what the file actually looks like. This is the file in question. It really is a normal Python file. When I scroll all the way at the bottom here, you can even see this very familiar if name equals main bit. That's very common in Python scripts. But you can also see that we have some functions that are decorated with app.cell. So let's go through the file. We import Marimo on top over here. Then we see a little bit of metadata. This is the version number of Marimo that's pretty useful for the bugging. And after that, you can see that we've got this Marimo app that we're instantiating. This app is something that is used all over the place later. In particular, you can see that a lot of the cells that we saw earlier, like the one where we import pi directly, that is a anonymous function that's decorated with this app.cell call. And this is how cells are represented. By putting them inside of a function, we have a nice stateless object. But what's important here is not just the fact that we're decorating a function here, but the real thing to pay attention to is what the function is returning. If we have a look at the cells that didn't have any errors in it, then you'll notice that the first cell over here, that is importing pi, but it is also returning it. And that returning isn't something that we declared in the notebook, that is something that Marimo is taking care of by itself. Every time that you update a cell, it is going to look at all the variables that are available in it, and then it's also going to make sure that those variables are returned. This gives us a mechanism to figure out what was defined in what cell, and what you can also notice is that there's this other cell over here that uses that variable and that it requires that variable as input. What I hope that you can appreciate at this point is that if I were to give a name to these cells, so this might be cell A and this might be cell B, that what Marimo is doing here, it's figuring out where variables are defined and then it's trying to figure out in what order the cells have to run. In this particular case, because in cell B over here, we are using pi, it'll look for cells that actually define pi, which in this case is this one. So you can imagine that it knows that A has to run before B is running. But in order to do that, we need to know two things. We need to know what variables go into cell B, and we need to explicitly know where that variable is defined. Otherwise, we don't have an updating mechanism at our disposal. So just to drive the point home completely, I made a small change to the notebook. I'm still importing pi above over here, but I'm now defining tau as well as radians. And then after that, I've got these other two cells down below here that query for tau and for radians, and they just show the value. But again, we're more interested in understanding the structure and how this chain of operation needs to proceed. When I save the notebook, I can see some changes being reflected down below. When I update the notebook, you can see the changes being reflected in the Python file. And again, if you pay attention to the variables that are being defined and what's being emitted by every decorated function here, then I hope that you can spot the relationship. The variable pi is defined in this cell, and the cell down below here needs that as an input. I have a cell down below over here that uses a variable called tau. Oh, and that is defined by this cell over here. And the final cell at the bottom over here needs radians, and radians is defined over here. And at this point, I hope it's really clear that if we have a variable that's defined globally, that is something that a cell can emit, and that is then something that another cell can use. And by leveraging this knowledge, we are able to infer in what order the cells have to run. And that also means that we can do things like automatic updating. If there's a UI element somewhere that is associated with a variable, if you change the value somewhere, then we know what cells have to update later. And all of that now brings me back to this one cell over here, the one where we are importing star. 
Because let's now wonder what would be a consistent way to import everything from the math submodule. One thing that you could do is you could literally import every single variable that's in there. And you're gonna have to hope that whoever implemented that library is doing their homework to make sure that Dunder all is defined because otherwise you might automatically be importing all sorts of other submodules. So that's a huge concern. You are also going to have to worry about collisions. If I do import star over here, I really have to make sure that there's no other variable anywhere in my code that might collide with the same name. But most importantly, in order for this flow of Marimo to work, we have to be quite strict about what is a global variable, because again, that defines the order in which other cells can update. And if we would ever allow for an import star, that would make it very hard for us to reason about what variables are defined where. I might also argue it's not necessarily a great practice to code using import star. You want to make use of namespaces as much as you can, because they're a great idea. And in this particular case, what you could also just do is import math directly, and then we can make do without this one line, and we just use math.py in this case, and you would still have all the benefits, but you would have a consistent notebook. And by doing this, you effectively just keep all the benefits, you still have one big submodule that you can easily grab all its children from. From a design perspective, one of the main things you also get in return is by being explicit about the variables that you define, you can also make sure that the representation that you have inside of the Python file matches one-to-one -to, -one to the representation that you have in the notebook. This leads to way less surprises, and generally, I also like to think these are very good coding practices anyway. So yes, Marimo does not allow for import star, but you do get a lot of benefits in return.